Last week, I discussed the railing stool in ArchiCAD. And this week, we're gonna drive a little bit deeper. Hi, welcome back to the Colorblind Architect Does ArchiCAD. And today, we're gonna to be talking about handrails on stairs. Now, this is a very code important area of design. So it's a little bit more technical. It's important to make sure that we get it right. So on the screen, I have a stair already set up going from one level to another. And we're going to go ahead and grab the railing tool. And on our favorites, we're just gonna go ahead and select the wall mounted rail. Now, because we have a rail, because we have a wall right next to this, uh, this, because we have a rail that will be mounted to a wall, this is a really simple rail. We're just gonna go through the settings, just double check. So segment, there's nothing, top rail, nothing, handrail. There's only the handrail. All the other settings are pretty much empty. So we have this mounted at three feet. We have our tube rail, tube steel, at one and a half inch diameter with metal trim. We've got the fixings turned on. You can go through, check the fixings. In the fixings, there's different types. This one's a wall mounted fixing with a railing plate. We've got three quarter inch plate here. We've got three sixteenths thickness for the wall plate so all these settings if you go through you can just adjust these these are pretty self-explanatory pretty easy then go to go through the fixing distribution because this is wall mounted I don't need to worry about it being attached to posts so we're gonna just have it distribute by a pattern automatic layout best fit four feet there's distribute by divisions as well you can actually have a specific number of them and you can also distribute by post. We'll use that one later. Then we go to the next tab and that's going to be our 2D representation and our 3D representation. Go through make sure all those settings look right. And you can also just double check all the rest of the settings just to make sure. But because this is a wall mounted handrail, there should really only be the one setting. And that's the handrails. We're not going to worry about the ends at this point because ends, that is something I have found works best once we get into the edit mode. So we're just gonna go ahead and click okay. And we're gonna hold down the space bar so that we can get the magic wand. And once we see it appears over the stair, we're gonna go ahead and click. And voila, we've got a handrail. Now, this handrail is, of course, not correct per code, so we're gonna go ahead and fix that. So the first thing is, this is going out like two feet, which is ridiculous. We actually, in the States, we do not actually need this section. So we can actually reduce that so it's only the 12 inch extension. And then when we go into the edit mode, we can actually grab that handrail extension and we can just double check the settings curve and we can also make sure that we've got the right radius the right extension in this case we're actually going a little bit too far we can actually reduce that down to one foot and you can also just double check the extension to the wall that is the side over here as it comes up close now if that's all looking good then let's fix the bottom. Now, in the building code where I am, the handrail at the bottom of a stair is supposed to extend one tread depth in the direction of travel, which is diagonal. So basically following the nosing of the stair. So this is not correct for my particular um, region. So I'm going to select this rail ending and I'm going to 
change this from horizontal to tangential. Now I'm going to go into the special rail settings and because the tread depth is only 11 inches I'm going to change this extension to 11 inches. Then I can double check the radius, the 90, and, you know, and all the other settings. So looks like we're good there. And our fixings look okay. So looks like we have a successful wall mounted handrail there. So now what about the other side? Well, the other side is open to the space over here. So we need a guardrail as well. So we can't just use the same railing tool. So we're going to go back to the top parent folder of the railing tool to get to the favorites for the entire thing. And then we're going to go into the guardrails and we're going to go ahead and see, okay, what's a favorite that looks pretty close. In my case, I've got a bunch of different favorites already set. Um, you know, for fun, let's go with the glass rail. Why not? Okay, now we're gonna go through and check our segment. So for the United States, typically it's 42 inches above the nosing of the stair for the, um, for the guardrail. And we can also check the pattern length, five feet, okay, maybe. Um, I almost think I'd rather set it as a equally distributed pattern, max length four feet. Um, just because when you get about four feet wide on a glass panel, it starts to get more expensive. So I'm um, trying to think of my clients and not making them pay too much. So in this case, we do not have a top rail. This one, the glass rail actually goes all the way up. Um, if you wanted to add a top rail, you could. And in this case, we could just make it like a little circle, maybe one inch and a half, just for fun. And then we can go through the other settings, make sure all that looks good, and then go to the handrails. Now, we've already got a handrail set here. It should be set, not at two foot 10, Ooh, that should be set at 36 inches. Now, the reason why I like to set it at 36 inches is there's a range of 34 to 38 inches that the handrail can be set at. And I like to go with 36, that way it's right in the middle, um, that way, when I'm dimensioning it and I'm telling the contractor to hit 36 inches, if they're a little bit off, off we're not going to get dinged on the inspection. Um, it's a little bit more likely for the contractor to have success. The next thing is we do not need the handrail on both sides. This would be if you, if you had like an intermediate rail, but on this one, we can select one of these sides left or right. In this case, we need to actually put it in to see if we got it right. Sometimes it's a little bit uh, confusing. So then we're gonna go back to the beginning, make sure that our handrail is the right size. So this one is set to be wood trim. I would prefer this to be metal. Wood up against glass, uh, it's, it's okay. Um, let's see, metal trim. And then let's go to our fixings page. On this one, we're going to set this to be similar to the wall mounted, but our, um, and then our settings are pretty much the same. Well, we, we can adjust this later, but then we're gonna change it to distribute by posts. And the reason is we want this to actually try to reach up with the inner posts. Now, inner posts, um, that's set up here. Um, it's a little bit confusing with inner post because you have the distance from previous, but then you also need to go into the segment and set your distribute pattern um, just to make sure your posts actually line up with that pattern. It's, it's a little bit confusing the way that works, but you know, whatever. I'm just gonna set that four feet and we're gonna have that go all the way up. So that way on the handrails, on the fixings, it should line up with those posts and that way we get a nice looking 3D model. Then you can go on to the 2D and the 3D representation. I'm gonna change this over to metal stainless steel. 
And for now, I think that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and we're gonna magic wand to build this rail. And it looks like looks like it's mostly right on the you know on the structure. Uh, a few things to fix. So the first thing to fix is that top rail. Uh, you know, on second thought, I really don't like having that top rail there. So I'm gonna go back here and we're just gonna go ahead and make sure the top rail is selected, that it's highlighted green, and hit the negative and delete that out. Okay, next thing that we're gonna do is I noticed that we had some issues with the handrail acting like a, a wall-mounted rail instead of um, extending past the typical. So let's go here to the ends and we're going to change this to handrail one and then let's select what we want it to do. I'm going to say one feet typically it's going to extend like that. And in this one, I, I just want it to fall back down to the floor. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to this option. That's the first option, curving and segment, plane, horizontal, right or left. And then you could have it go to the reference line, but that doesn't work all the time because the reference line, a lot of times it's diagonal, so it doesn't really function right. So I'm actually going to change this to three feet for the extension. And I'm also going to change this one to vertical on the curve angle. And that way, hopefully when we click on this, both the top and the bottom, they now extend to the floor, sort of. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to hit edit. Now, just like before, I'm going to, well, see, this is a little bit tricky on this side because this one, we ended the stair with a tread. This is probably not the best way to design the stair. So in this case, because of that, we're going to have this extending past. If we wanted to have this a little bit more accurate to the way a handrail would be, we would bring this back and then we would go back, choose this ending and we would just double check, okay, it's one foot extended. And of course, you guys all love my dog. He loves to bark. So anyways, um, we're going to go still in, still in edit mode. We're now going to select the one at the bottom. Just like the other side, we're going to change this from horizontal to tangential. And we're also Again, we're going to go into the custom settings for this end and change the extension length to 11 inches. That way it matches up with the code requirement. Obviously you can go further than 11 inches, but the code is one tread depth. So we go one tread depth, no need to pay extra for railing that you don't need. All right. And then we exit the edit mode and now, as you can see, we've got the handrail going up and it's got the extensions as per code. Now, what if instead of extending to the floor, what if you wanted to have these ends turn in on themselves? Well, that one is also pretty easy. You can select this and instead of the curve, you can do a full return. And then we go into our settings. And instead of going down three feet, we're going to go down one feet and we're going to extend this one feet because when you do a full return like this, um, in the States, it's usually about 12 inches is the requirement for the full return. And that's how you could do a full return. Now, unfortunately, the railing tool does not allow it to then turn back into the rail. It just ends like that. Um, if you had a post here, this would make more sense. But that's why a lot of times I do the floor extension just because it's easier. Um, it's, I think it looks better, but there are times when the full return makes sense. And so that's how you do that. And with that, I think we're done with this tutorial. 
And so hopefully this has been helpful. Thank you for joining me. I'm the colorblind architect doing ARCHICAD. Peace out.